Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Pineapple Podcast, where it's all about being tough on the outside and sweet on the inside. Today, I have a very special guest, Adrian Campbell. Adrian is a gentleman that kind of came into the into the space of real estate investing with himself and his wife, Carol, and they've stumbled into it. And then they realized that student rental is the, is the big deal for them and that they love to, to work on that. And they basically become experts at it. So today we're going to talk to Adrian. We're going to unpack student rental and just getting into the journey. Adrian, welcome to the Pineapple Podcast. Hey, Mitch. Thanks a lot for having me. Oh, Hello, you're most everyone. welcome. You're most welcome. So Adrian, I want to get into the into the real estate investing world because, you know, the biggest challenge, as you know, for most of the viewers, most of the people coming into real estate is that they're living a nine to five, they're doing their regular thing, and then they realize, hey, we want to learn this, we want to get into it. But a lot of times we don't even know. And we even get nervous about jumping into it, right? So yeah. I'd love to capture your sort of the beginning uh, in terms of how did you guys actually get into real estate investing? Oh, sure, Mitch. So, you know, um, we got into real estate investing somewhat by mistake or by happenstance, ah, so to okay. speak. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, we had our principal residence, you know, quite earlier on. And um, so we were quite happy just having that one property. You know, we didn't know about the power of real estate and, and what it could do for you in terms of um, financial freedom and so on. Nice. So I was at work um, one day and my wife called me up and says, honey, we just bought a house. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> she, she just called you up. Honey, we bought a house. Honey, we bought a house. <laughs> so it, it so happened that she was, you know, speaking with a few colleagues yeah. and an opportunity came up with um, uh, a property in London, Ontario, okay. close to Cranshaw. And there was a group of people that were purchasing this property. Yeah. And she said, yes, we're interested in one. And she, she bought one and she made a commitment and she called me up and said, honey, we just bought a house. So that's basically how we got started in our investment journey. And Love no that. regrets to, to this day, no regrets <laughs> so far. So we're very happy. Um, so that just kind of was our starting point and we just right. built it from there good and you know what that that is brilliant because somebody's got to make the step and you know i've been fortunate enough to know to know carol and i can tell you she's she's definitely the go-getter like she makes up her mind things happen right that's right um, no no discussions no nothing it's like this is the right deal let's do it and for our viewers too i mean sometimes this is what it takes you got to get pushed over the edge you got to exactly. take that bold step right so right so, right so yeah. good on her because that one decision, I mean, today you're you're in a different place, right? Different place completely. Yeah. Different place completely. So, and, um, you know, we, we like the student rental. I mean, like I said, we didn't have the experience before. Right. But the fact that we have the student rental, it's a five bedroom. It's almost like a purpose built property, um, very close to the college itself. Um, five bedrooms and two and a half baths. So we were able to rent that out and, you know, get a really good cash flow compared to renting it to a single family. So that's right. what really helped us. You know, even if, um, if one student is not paying the rent, you're still getting some cash flow in. So we, we thought that was a good way to actually hedge our bets, kind of mitigate our risk if yes. we don't have that, um, that steady income. But we've never had any issues with tenants um, so far. So, you know, the cash flow has been very strong. So can't complain about that. So do that yeah. for us is the way to go. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, that is ideally, you know, student rental because you're basically renting bedrooms, right? Yes. Uh, it allows you where it's a cheaper cost for the student, but it's better for you from a revenue perspective, right? Uh -huh. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. So in terms of the numbers, I don't know if you want to share any numbers or anything in terms of what does that look like when you get into it. But an interesting question would also be, when you decided to go to the student rental, was the property already financed or did you find challenges with getting it rented as a student rental? Sorry, getting it financed as a student rental. No, actually, we didn't have any issues getting it um, financed. The, the oh, bank that we used um, was CIBC. And CIBC, right. they're pretty open to student, student rentals. The nice. only challenge that I would... Um, ensure is when you get your leases, get all the students to sign on one lease. Don't have five individual leases. Although you have an arrangement with, 
with each student because they may be paying a, a different amount because of the size of the bedrooms, get everyone to sign on a single lease. This is um, the strategy that we've been using. So when we yeah. go to the bank, we show the bank the, the, the leases or the lease, they can see that it's not, um, not necessarily a, a rooming house. Right. It's not a rooming house, it's actually a house. There's a group of students that are sharing it, but they're all on the same lease. So they look at it more favorably that way, rather than having five separate leases. And I love that. Actually, that that is that is really a, a key because again, you know, number of names on the lease is not as important as showing five leases because we do want to get away from their whole concept of rooming houses and so on. Because yeah. most of the banks they don't like it, right? They don't but this like way, it, right? yeah, this way you're treating it as one unit, basically with with a family of five people, so to speak. Exactly. That, that's basically how they look at it. So yeah. yes, it worked out pretty good that way. So they're very open to um to looking at student rentals. We we have three properties now and they're all with CIBC and they're been very, very good to work with. So, you know, we can talk some more about some of the other properties, but yeah, so far so good. And there are other lenders as well too, who are open to that idea. But like I said, the key is to have a single lease. So when you show them your, your revenue, you know, it, it makes sense. They, they don't have to look at five separate leases. Okay, so let's hold it there. Mm -hmm. um, what do I want to do here? Okay, so um... I, I seem to be looking down, Mitch. I need to look up, right? Um, your face seems to be quite fine in that yeah. space. Yeah. Okay. So we could continue. Okay. All right, so just three, two, one. So again, Adrian, in terms of the student rental, so you are renting in currently in the market that you're looking at is in London, Ontario? London, Ontario, that's correct. Nice. And so you've said that you've actually been able to find really great tenants that are able to work with you guys in an amazing way, right? That's so correct. I want to I wanna unpack that a little bit as well because the challenge sometimes, as you know, the there is a stigma for some reason where previously people felt students, they're not the greatest tenants. I, however, think it's different now because typically the parents are invested with the children to make sure that they're getting an education. Right, uh, right. It's a big investment at the end of the day, right? And you're providing houses. So maybe you could share with us some of the techniques or the things you do to vet the tenants to make sure you're getting the quality uh, tenant that's going to take care of the place. Right. So I'll back up for just a minute, Mitch, just to give you sure. a little bit of background. Absolutely. So our property, when we put it on the market, you know, we, we, we actually re remodeled one of the properties, did, did, did the floor, did the kitchen, did the walls and everything. So the place looks really, um, really nice. So you find that when you have a good product, you're going to attract the best students. Nice. You know, you're, you're not at the lowest price point. You're not necessarily at the highest price point, but you're, you're somewhere in between. So when students, when you, when you get applications in, you're getting applications from students who can afford the, the price range that we're in. And when they right. see the property, they, they get a nice place, nice clean space. Their parents come and they see the place. They tend to want to keep it that way. Beautiful. If, uh, if you have a place that, you know, someone divided a, a dining room into two bedrooms by putting up a sheet or something, <laughs> you're, gonna find, you're gonna get the, the lowest of the bottom. So I find that just having your place in very good condition where they're proud to say that they live there, they're happy to bring their family and their friends over, they want to keep it that way. And that's what we found with, with our students is that we give them a good property and they, they, they really appreciate it. And, and they show that appreciation by keeping it in, in pristine condition, more or less. You know, not, not going to be as perfect as, as your house, but at least they're not... Um, you know, walking in with mud and, and doing all kinds of crazy things, having parties and stuff like that. So the product that you have will actually attract the kind of students that you want to have as tenants. Absolutely. And I absolutely love that because again, we always talk about it, you know, yeah. you don't want to go down the road of slumlording. You really do want to be a quality landlord. And right. from what you're saying, that that's the perfect recipe for having a great business, right? Exactly. As you know, businesses, they have different models, different things or different 
levels, they all cater for different types of people in the market. Right. But right. what you are sharing with us today, and thank you for that, because I think it's absolutely brilliant. And again, the focus is if you are coming into this space, really and truly, if you put the money into the property, if right. you make it welcoming, if Thank you make you. it quality, you're going to get that quality tenant because you can ask for the price that Thank you me. think it's deserving of the property and you'll get it, right? Exactly, right. Yeah. So that, that's what we found um, because we, we have other um, colleagues who have rental properties or we hear about other um, units within our complex. And the comment is that yours is the nicest place in the entire um, complex. So right. we don't have a problem filling it. If someone moves out or needs to move out, they'll actually find tenants for us. They actually find tenants to replace um, if, they're, if they have to leave. So yes. we've never had to advertise a lot in the, in the past two years or so. Because right. once, um, once somebody's moving out, there's always someone, a friend of theirs who really liked that place and they just want to pick it up right away. So we don't really have that issue. Absolutely. I mean, that speaks for itself, right? That's word of mouth. That's pretty powerful, you yeah. know? And the, probably the next the next step to that is make your list of uh, people that are looking for places and then you go get the, enough properties to fill it, right? Get another property. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I don't think there's a shortage of, um, of renters, especially in London. Because of the, the Fanshawe College and, and Western, we actually have two properties close to Fanshawe. So we cater to the Fanshawe students there. Then we have another property that's closer to the Western side of things. Right. Um, so that's a, a, a totally different product though. We, that property um, is more like a, a, a um, exclusive student rental, like executive student rental. It's five, okay. five bedrooms, six washrooms. Oh my. Each Very bedroom nice. has an ensuite. <laughs> so, you know, the students, when they get into that property, they don't want to leave, you know, and that's closer to the university. So that one, you know, commands a slightly higher price, but as you can imagine, when they walked in, it was a brand new um, build that we bought. Yes. And when, when they walked in, they were so amazed at, at the place. They just were so excited to have their friends over and their family. So that one is doing really well as well. So that's yeah. the most expensive one we have, but um, it is one of those luxury student rentals that now in that market. Well, you know, that that's definitely an area that we can, can talk about as well, if you'd like to share a little bit, because luxury student <laughs> rental is something a lot of people, they're not aware that it exists, that they, they're not getting yeah. into it. So so maybe if you want to unpack a little bit about, you know, how exactly do you do it? What are the, the features in the property that makes it luxury? And then what's yeah. your price differential between sort of your average renting to, to getting into the luxury market? Yeah, well, um, certainly we can do that. So the luxury student market is primarily where you have your own washroom, an ensuite. Right. In this, this case, it's five bedroom, six washrooms. Yes. So it's, um, a half bath for, for guests. Now, in the, in the city of London, the um, student rentals, they're regulated. You're not allowed to go past five bedrooms. So right. that's why you kind of stick to five bedrooms. There may be more that have more than five bedrooms, but they may not be registered with the city. Right. So you can actually register your unit with the city as a student rental. Nice. So with, with the property that we, we have... Um, at the luxury student rental, um, we provide furnishings for the common area. So there's a, a nice sofa, coffee table. We put a nice big screen TV on the wall, smart TV. Um, so when you walk in, it's very inviting. In the kitchen, we have granite countertops. We provide two fridge refrigerators. Ah. So that's, that's the key. We've gone into other properties. We see a single refrigerator. Right. A single refrigerator for five students will not work. Agree. So we put two nice, huge refrigerators in, in this space. We provide in-suite laundry, so there's a laundry room. We provide additional storage, so they can store their, um, their luggage or whatever they're, they're traveling with. So that's, we have a lower level in the basement. So we provide all those amenities. So students really like that because, you know, these are adult students. They're not 18 and 19 years old. These are students that are in second and third year university. Maybe they're in their um, post-grad um, program and stuff like that. So they really appreciate the fact that they have their own privacy. They have their own suite, so to speak. They have their own bedroom. They have um, their own ensuite. So they'll pay a premium for that. Um, right now, 
a space like that where you can get about 725 to 750 per room. Mm -hmm. And I know some, some places are charging 800 per room. And, and that's, that's the, the going rate at this, at this point. 800 per room, no issues. The students like it. They provide their own internet, their own, if they need cable, they'll, they'll get their own cable, but they come as a group and they all come together and they provide their own internet in, in that particular space. Because you know we don't know what services they want and so on. So in that that building, they provide their own internet, and everybody you know kind of cooperates and make it happen. But just in terms of the common space, we all of the properties we do that we furnish a common area, nice you know sofa, dining um, dining room table, coffee table. We put a nice TV on the wall so they have that for entertaining, and um, and and the the two refrigerators like I mentioned. That's very very important. So that there, there's, there's enough space for them to store their groceries and we provide an extra pantry if they need to store other goods as well. So just make it really comfortable, you know, so these students really feel like they're not missing anything from home. Absolutely. I mean, that's brilliant, right? I love, <clears throat> I love what you're sharing here because really and truly, this is, you know, this is your business and this is the business of many people coming into the space and Sometimes they're nervous, they're not sure how to do this. And you're demonstrating that you can actually get luxury uh, apartment styles. Yes. You can cash in in terms of getting that money back to you. So yeah, you're putting in two fridges. You're putting in the stone countertops. Yeah. One is you have a beautiful place that you can call home and you're proud to even have other students and parents coming to visit. Hey, yeah. they're going to see an amazing place. Yeah, yeah. The other thing is, People, you know, they're already investing thousands of dollars in their education. Yes. Well, four, three, four, five years is a long time, you know, to be away from home. So why do you want to be compromised when you can afford to live in enough of a luxury environment where, yes. you know, yes, you're tacking on to your, to your student loan, but, you know, the, the education is going to pay back for that. And then some of them might actually become uh, real estate investors, right? You never know. Uh, exactly. That's yeah. right. Yeah, for sure. So, so it, it comes back. But again, you know, one of the things we talk about is people are always feeling, I got to sacrifice now and I got to go through the burden now for a better tomorrow. Yes. Well, what if there's no tomorrow? This is why we have to reframe our mindset as well and get into, well, what is possible today? right yes, yes. we're always working towards something but be comfortable enjoy every day enjoy every moment of course because you're chasing don't chase just start to enjoy enjoy you know and whatever your situation is yeah you're going to school for four years make it the best four years be comfortable okay. enough that you can afford yeah. it you know uh money is a real issue for a lot of people but there are ways to work around it you again you're funding you're financing it the student really of today is the people for tomorrow, right? They are the leaders exactly. for tomorrow. Exactly. So, so we need to provide as investors, we need to provide this, the, the right homes for them. And, I, and exactly. I like your sharing this because the one challenge you hear all the time, well, mm -hmm. the banks don't like it. The banks don't want to talk about student rental. And here you are sitting down with me and telling me, hey, you know what? The banks love me. Yeah. Right? I, I, I do really well with my properties. And this is, you know, student rental, it's like similar to short-term rental, right? Yeah. They're in for a year. After that, they're going to move to somewhere else or something else, right. maximum three years. Yes. So you're not burdened by long-term leases. And then you got in, in your Ontario market, you can raise rent maybe one and a half percent, 1.25%, yeah. you know, there, it really gets very complicated in a controlled state exactly. in order to be efficient at your business. So right. the longer tenants, long-term tenants stay in your properties, the more difficult it is to, to get that, that money coming out to cover your costs because exactly you know regulation is saying, let's say 2.5%, I believe is next year's. So yeah. regulation is saying that, inflation is saying 8%, your property taxes, your mortgages, everything, everything your going, going up. is growing significantly. Yes. So, so now you are in, in a space where you could counter that because once tenants turn over, you go back to market rates. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can bump up the rates, you know, $50 here, $50 there. It, it really adds up. 
because as you mentioned, you know, all the expenses, um, property taxes, all the expenses are going up. It, it's eating away at your bottom line, at the cash flow. So you have to find some way to hedge against that, to mitigate that risk. So, so this, is, this is how you can do it. Um, you know, if you have a, a long-term tenant or student in there, you're not going to raise the rent on that student. But when they turn over, you know, they're turning over maybe end of April, then you can look forward to, to increasing at that point. So, yeah, it, it works out. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's the beauty. That's what we want. You know, you want an efficient way of running your business. Right. One of the things, Adrian, that I want to I want to touch on, too, is because, you know, we're talking about the fact that the tenant is in the property and it's working well and everything like yeah. that. But how do you find the right tenants? Are you posting it in the university? Are you networking with with some of the groups that bring foreign students? Are you, you know, like give us a sense of what are some of the best strategies to find the right students? Well, we, we use a, a, a few different strategies. Um, in the past, we would, of course, network with the university. Right. Um, one of our properties in London, we have a property management company that looks after that property for us. So we, it's pretty much hands off. We're pretty much, we're hands on because we're, we talk to them every few weeks, but they, they fill the space for us. We, so we don't have to worry about, so they have you know, a, a long waiting list because they have over a hundred properties that they manage. Nice. This is a very well known property management company in London. They've been, been doing this for over 12 years. Right. So they're very well versed in, in handling that. So they don't have an issue filling that space. And like I said, they also say to the students, if you have a friend, you know, you want to refer that friend in and they'll give them a finder's fee and so on. So they, they go that route as well. Nice. But for the properties close by Fanshawe, we do advertise on the Fanshawe's website. And we advertise on all the other sites out there as well, Kijiji and stuff like that, if we, if we have a need. Right. And, we find, you know, we'll put up an ad if we have a vacancy and I'll get 10, 12, 15 calls for that one space. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, we will jump on a phone call yeah. with, with, with the person, um, if it's the parents or, or just the, the, the student themselves, we'll jump on a call and, you know, we'll, we'll see if, if it's a good fit and then we'll make a decision. So we, we go to a, a pretty much of a, a tight screening process. So we, we have a form that they fill out and they show their finances and stuff like that. Um, so that has been one of the things that we've been doing um, recently. But at, to go to the fan track college, because there are so many foreign students, we're getting a lot of foreigners. So we're getting a lot of um, people from India. We, we have people from the Caribbean. We have people from Africa. So in, in those instances, we actually ask for proof of funds. Nice. So... so I, one of um, a couple of students that are at, in a Fanshawe property, close to Fanshawe, they provided us their bank statement. Um, there's one student, she, she gets her um, GICs. She, so her parents set up GICs for her that mature every month. Ah, okay. GIC mature every month. So she <laughs> has to show that. So as a, as a student, so we ask for proof of income. So we'll see their bank statement. And some of these students, once they get here, they get into their own little part-time jobs and so on. So we don't have any issues. I have students who are paying me three months in advance. Nice. I have, yeah, I have a student that moved in recently. He called me up, says, I'd like to pay my rent for the rest of the year. <laughs> no that issues. is the best cash flowing strategy so you can get. He pays the rent for the rest of the year. So he doesn't have to pay anything until, yeah. until January. Nice. So make sure we record it. He has a, a receipt that he's paid these funds and those, Funds are in my account, and um, there are students that I have from Africa. They pay their rent, although it's due at the first of the month. They paid on the fifteenth of the month, so we're getting the rent early every single every <laughs> single month. So you know, we really don't have any anything bad to say about those students. Like you said, how do we vet them? You know, you can only vet them so much, but once they get to, to meet us, you know, we're so accommodating and helpful to them because they are away from home. Um, so they look to us sometimes as kind of their second parents because we yes. treat them, we treat them that way because we have children um, around the same age. So we, we give them some advice whenever we, you know, they, they have any issues, we counsel them and stuff like that. Yes. So it's interesting that you mentioned um, about the, the type of students. We have one property, they're only girls. Okay. And then the other property yeah. has boys. Nice. So we have, so we don't, 
do the co-head thing, but um, right. I know some some other places will do that. But we have one property; it's all girls, and they keep the place in, in an amazing condition. You know. <laughs> yes. If there are any issues, they call call us up. They have my number. They can WhatsApp me or email me anytime. And we're about an hour and a half out of London, so we go there quite often. Like I said, I'm a, we pretty much we're hands on just because we want to be. Right. But we have access to contractors if we have that need them to do anything over and above what I like doing. Right. And I, and I like to check the fire extinguisher. I like to check the um, smoke detectors. I like to change the um, the filters and stuff like that just to kind of keep myself involved with the property. Nice. The one that, that we don't have a property management for, but we do have them if we need them because I'm not going to drive from here an hour and a half just for any little thing. I have people I can call to do that, yes. which is really the key. Yeah. That's, um, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. And I, I want to touch on that a little bit more too, because yeah, you're, you're managing your time efficiently. Yeah. So you have the property managers there. You like being hands-on, but you're yeah. going to go there on your schedule. You're not going to wake up and every few minutes, I got to exactly. go. Exactly. Exactly. You know? exactly. So you're, the you're managing your time. Yep. It gives you the best of both worlds, right? So 100%. Yeah. So you don't want to you don't want to stay away from your property for too long because you never know what can happen. But you know, you like to go take a look at the place every three months or so, um, or even twice a year, you know, just, just to make sure everything is okay. Just to let the folks see your face as well and just to say hi and maybe have a lunch with them. We sometimes when we go out there, we, we order pizza and we'll all sit and have have a meal, you know. So they really enjoy that. So we, we take good care of them. No, that that you know what that's brilliant sharing for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because absentee landlords means absentee properties, right? Nobody's looking, nobody's caring. And yeah. sometimes it's just a matter of a walkthrough, checking it out, yeah. making sure everything is is in a good working order for, for, for the tenants. Because not all of them are prepared to pick up the phone. Not all of them will call you. Some of them are yeah. literally shy, right? Or some of them yeah. don't even know it's a problem. Right. So, so you as a landlord, when you can go in once or twice a year, I mean, like that's yeah. that's perfect, right? Yes, yes. Then you, you're sharing, you're checking it out. But I love the fact that you're giving back. And, you know, sharing a meal is actually one of the most powerful negotiating or rather networking opportunity. You want to build relationships, share a meal, share yeah, a yeah. coffee, you know, course, spend yeah. that time breaking bread together. You know, that to me is, is, is brilliant. And the fact that you're sharing it tonight, I yeah. love it, man. That's, that it's is not- a critical component. In it. And this is a clear demonstration yeah. where we talk about these tenants are your customers. Exactly. You know, exactly you have they to treat are putting them. money in your pocket. They are building your wealth for you. Exactly. Yeah. Treat them like it, you know, let them feel special. Of course. That's very important. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so far, so good. Don't have any issues with student rentals. Um, the prices have really skyrocketed, making it harder, but there are still opportunities out there. There's still opportunities out there where people can uh, can take advantage of it and, and really reap the benefits. So let's have to look at your numbers. Run your numbers. Make sure you have everything covered and, and you'll see how your bottom line is. Right. And I, and I want to unpack that a little bit too because I know, you know, uh, I know tonight we're talking student rental as well, but just to mention that Carol has also transitioned uh, from her corporate world into becoming a real estate agent because of the love and the passion here, right? Exactly, yes. And her focus as well is finding these opportunities, right? Exactly, yes, yes. So she thought they had their ear to the ground. We actually had um, a builder give us a call to say they had a property available. I think it's gone now, but they, you know, she's probably one of the first people they call when they have a property available, especially the luxury student rentals. No. That, so we have a good relationship with a builder who, who does these. Um, and we, we saw it a few weeks ago. We were in London. Lovely place. Um, same five bedrooms, six washrooms. I think it's fully rented now. Um, so, yeah, so we're, they're always coming on the market. So we have to just keep our eye out for them and um, run the numbers. And, yeah, you can't go wrong. You, you said it. You got to run the numbers. You know, and the one thing with this is, as you know, there's four and five ways to win in a property. Oh, yeah. But cash flow is is one of those determinations and we've often hear on the on the long-term leasing side that cash flow is eroding because yeah you know mortgage is high interest rates are high uh yes. utilities have gone up so as you rightly said it's eroding at everything i think this strategy 
allows you to get a little bit ahead of it, right? It can have a better cushion. Exactly. So you, so you can stay in the game longer because you, know, you, you don't want to see a, a negative in your cash flow, right? Once you're a positive cash flow, you can ride out any storm. And you, you're really building on your equity, right? So the cash flow may not be massive. You may be making $500 per month in cash flow or $400 per month in cash flow, but your equity that's being built in that property, you know, four, five, six, 10% per year on that principal, that's really where the wealth is. That's really where your money comes, right? Not necessarily from the cash flow. The cash flow is just, just the, the oil that keeps the engine going. That's but it. You really look at the equity that's being built, right? So just to give you a, a little strategy or a little background of the one of the properties that we have, we, we bought um, a property maybe three years ago. Right. And it's almost like we got it for free because we right. use equity in one property yeah. as a down payment for that property. So we end up getting a free house and the, the rent pays for the additional expense of the original property. And the, they're, all ca they're both cash flowing. So that's really the strategy around building wealth with real estate is to learn those strategies, how to leverage equity, use one property to buy another. So now we're probably in a position where we can do that again and get a third house for free. So it's, it's really a concept that's mind blowing and, and not a lot of people will, will know about that. But we were amazed when we discovered that. We discovered it by mistake at one point, but now that we know it's a strategy that we can repeat over and over and over. Absolutely. And that's, you know, that's definitely something we're going to talk about in another session because yeah. this is how you grow real estate. People want to always figure out, well, how do you add another property and another property? Yeah. Well, Adrian has just demonstrated that this is how you do it. The property, you know, a lot of us are fixated on the, the dollars we can see with our physical eyes and it's in yeah. the bank account. But in reality, the true wealth is in, is in the equity growth, right? The yeah. true wealth is when that when that tenant is paying that that rent, your principal is getting knocked off every month and exactly. it's growing in equity. And then let's face it, the Ontario market has been on fire for the last several years, yeah. as well as the whole of Canada, I would say. And we've, we've seen the jumps and the growth at 20 plus, 25 plus in some markets. Yeah. Now we're seeing a bit of a cool off, right? In, in, yeah. And this is triggered by government intervention. But even though it's cooling off, it's not going back to pre, let's say, pre-2018 numbers, right? The, no, the no. markets continue to hold. Yeah. And the right thing you said, Adrian, is when you strategize for a property that can give you a better uh, than average rental income, then yeah. you can weather the up and down, right? So, exactly, yes. Yeah, yeah. So absolutely love that. I think that's a, that's a brilliant way to go, you know, uh, again, Adrian, I want to say thank you very much for sharing this knowledge because, you know, until people don't get to talk to people like yourself that's actually yeah. in it and doing it, you know, um, they they can't really see for themselves what are the beautiful opportunities, you know. Exactly. Yep. So, was happy to be here, Mitch. Really enjoyed um, sitting and talking with you. You know, I, I spoke to um, a, an investor a few years ago, real estate investor, very, very um you know, well-to-do, very successful in the U.S. Yeah. And I asked him what was the key ingredient? What What's the key to his investing success? Yes. And he says, courage. It takes ah. courage. <laughs> but sometimes when you look at the big picture, yes. you know, and you're wondering, you know, can I do this? Can I really, you know, take these funds and do this this um this, this, this business or do this deal? It, it's really courage that really pushes you to make it happen. And once you start... You know, you will find a way, you know, the, the, the doors will open up. So once you have that courage to step out and start. So I found that was a really good advice. The key information that he gave me was his basically his key ingredient was courage. You could have everything else, but without courage, you're not going to make that step. So that's really what I want to leave the, leave the listeners with today. I absolutely love that. I think there's no better way to say it or frame it. Yeah. Uh, because it does take courage, you know, courage along with confidence is going to definitely uh, move you along in this journey of real estate investing. Yeah, and for those sure. of you who would like to connect with, with, with Adrian, I'm going to leave uh, your contact information in the comments uh, in, yeah. the, in the section down below. 
So you can always have access to, to Adrian and to chat a little bit more about student rental and to see what opportunities uh, between him and Carol uh, that might be available. Of so course. For, yep. So once again, everybody uh, just wanted to say a big thank you for tuning in to the Pineapple Podcast. Remember to hit the like and subscribe and the notify button as we are growing our base. And we please invite your friends and your family to check out the Pineapple Podcast. Remember, it's all about being tough on the outside and sweet on the inside. And we're wishing you continued success in your real estate journey. Goodbye, everybody. All righty. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.